Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. We've been having some fun with external GPUs here on the channel recently, thanks to some new devices that support Oculink connections. But one of my gripes about all this Oculink stuff is that the adapters don't come with a power supply. So you end up getting this science project looking project on your desk that isn't all that attractive. But the other day, the folks from GT Box reached out with their G Dock, and this one integrates the power supply. And apparently it's an 800 watt power supply, so you can connect a pretty beefy GPU to it. And this will allow you to connect over Oculink, but it also supports Thunderbolt and USB 4, and that includes power delivery. So you can actually plug your laptop into the Thunderbolt connection here and power the laptop and get a GPU out of a single box here. And of course, you've got to put your GPU on the top of it here. So it is not an enclosure in the sense that it's a box, but it does allow you to get your PCI Express cards mounted on top of it. And it might be a better solution than some of the cheaper ones that we've been playing around with lately. So we're going to get this thing up and running in real time. First, we'll connect it up to a mini PC. And after that, we'll connect a laptop to it and see how this all works. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the folks from GT Box sent us to the channel free of charge. However, they did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. No other compensation was received and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this docking station is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at $249 if you buy direct on their website. You can get an additional $10 off with the coupon code they gave me, LON10, if you wanted to save yourself some bucks. Now, if you prefer to buy it on Amazon, it does cost a little bit more there, about $279 at the time I'm recording this video. Now, as I mentioned, this has an 800-watt power supply integrated, and you can connect over Oculink or Thunderbolt slash USB 4. If you have a USB-equipped PC that doesn't have Thunderbolt, you need to make sure this has a 40 gigabit per second USB 4 connection for this to work. If you have an older USB 3.2 connection, which looks identical to this, it won't work with it. So again, Thunderbolt or USB 4 40 gigabit, otherwise you're out of luck on the USB side. The Oculink here, of course, requires some kind of Oculink adapter on your PC. A bunch of mini PCs we've looked at recently do have that connector built right in, but there are adapters that you can get. So a few weeks ago, we did that cheap mini PC with an NVMe to Oculink connector. That was kind of fun. Now, they also have PCI Express cards like this one I have installed on this Minus Forum MSA29955 mini PC we'll be reviewing soon. And as you can see here, that puts the Oculink port on the outside, and that's what we'll be testing with initially here. Now, Oculink is a four-lane PCI Express 4 connection technology. And again, it puts your stuff right on the system bus, so it is a little more efficient than Thunderbolt and USB 4 might be. And don't forget, you're not limited to just GPUs with this device. You can connect pretty much any PCI Express card to it. For example, my local high school has a small Thunderbolt breakout box where we have our video capture card in there. Uh, so you could do a lot with this beyond just GPUs. One last note is that this doesn't work with the Mac. Although Macs have Thunderbolt ports, they don't support external slots like this. So you're not going to be able to attach this to your Mac, at least at the time I'm shooting this video. Be great to have that feature come back to Apple at some point in the near future. But right now, this is a PC only solution. So next up, what we're going to do is attach my 4060 GPU here to the dock, and then we're going to plug it into that Minus Forum PC. So why don't we get started on that? All right, I've got my GPU here. I did attach the power cable already to it, and they give you three of these power cables in the box, so you can use as many or as few as you need. And all you got to do is just pop it in like you would any other desktop card here. It just slides into place. They do have a little screw here on the side to... Uh, lock the card down. So we're going to just unscrew that a little bit and get everything situated in here. And now that we're there, we can tighten everything up and our card is installed. Next up, we're going to uh, get our power supply attached, which we're going to do on this side. You can plug it into any one of these three ports and my GPU only needs one of these. So we'll have that connected and we are ready to go here, I think, getting our PC connected up next. Now, again, this PC we're using has an Oculink connector. So they did give us an Oculink cable in the box to hook it up. And then we'll do the USB 4 with the laptop in the second part of our testing. All right, so we're ready to get moving here. I've got my Oculink cable here attached to the back of the mini PC. I'm going to plug that in to the Oculink port on the power supply. Important to note here is that this is not hot swappable if you're in Oculink mode. So you can't pull it out and plug it back in at will. You have to boot up 
with the computer connected first, otherwise it won't work. The other thing we're gonna do is attach our HDMI cable, not to the mini PC, but to the GPU. And the reason is, is that we want to get the best performance out of this. And so the video is going to route through the GPU into the display. And some PCs will let you route the display from the GPU through its internal HDMI port, but you'll lose performance that way. So for the best performance, plug it in directly to the GPU. Now there's a power switch on here. I'm just going to cycle it real quick just to make sure that we've got the Oculink here selected. And once we have that done, we can go ahead here and turn on the computer and let's see what happens. It looks like my fan spun up here on the GPU, which is a good sign. And let's see if we get video on the display. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is downloaded the GPU drivers for the NVIDIA card. So we're going to do that after we get into Windows. Usually Windows can detect the uh, GPU enough to work with it. So that is the plan here. This does have a fan on it. It's not all that noisy. I think the GPU fan may make more noise than the power supply fan does. But as you can see here, we're getting video out of the card and we're successfully booting into Windows now. So it'll boot up with whatever default uh, drivers that Windows assigns to this. And what I'll do now is grab those NVIDIA drivers and we'll load up a game and see how it performs. All right, so the NVIDIA drivers are installed. I booted up Cyberpunk here. I'm running it at 1080p using the optimized settings from the NVIDIA app. I think we're kind of at medium settings here. And this computer is delivering about 200 and 20 frames per second or so here. I'm sure we could crank up the quality levels a bit more, but it does give us a good indicator that this GPU is working properly. One of the things that surprised me about this mini PC was how poor its onboard graphics performs. So it's got a lot of CPU horsepower, but not a lot of graphical horsepower. So this is certainly an improvement. You'll learn more about that in my review, but there you go. It's pretty easy to get these things up and running. You pretty much plug them in like you would if you were connecting directly to the motherboard. All right, so why don't we get my laptop out now and run a similar demo on that. Now the laptop of course has Thunderbolt ports on it. So we'll be using the Thunderbolt connection from the eGPU to get all of that working. So why don't we go ahead and get that started. All right, so I've got it connected now to the laptop via Thunderbolt and all seems to be working well. I did up the settings a little bit just to see if we could get a little more quality out of the imagery here. And it seems to be working just fine, very similar to some of these other Thunderbolt slash Oculink devices we've tested recently. There is a slight bit of a performance hit when you choose Thunderbolt over Oculink. So if you have the ability to connect via Oculink, that will be more like a direct bus connection. One other thing to note is that I have the internal display here switched off at the moment, and I have it displaying just on the big display here through the GPU where the HDMI is connected because you will see a performance hit if you route the video through your laptop's display versus outputting directly through the GPU. So altogether, this was a fun external GPU solution. It worked fine with Thunderbolt and USB 4 along with Oculink. Remember, you need that Thunderbolt or USB 4 connection for this to work. Just having the connector is not enough. Um, but if you have the right connector, I think this is a good solution and I really like the integration of the power supply. The fan is not noisy on this at all. I think you'll hear the fans more from your GPU or your computer than you will from it, and all in it seemed to be running pretty stable throughout my testing with it. I would like to see at some point though an enclosure, a proper one that kind of protects the card. I don't like this idea of having PCI Express cards just hanging out there in the open, so hopefully at some point somebody will get the idea to go back to the Thunderbolt enclosures we had 10 years ago that you could build a case around and have the power supply and the slot and everything else all integrated in. But this is definitely a better Oculink solution than what I have been testing prior to this. So that will do it for the GT Box. Until next time, this is Lon Seiben. Thanks for watching.